Hello everyone. Welcome to episode 8. Before we dive into today's offering, let's check out last week's What in the World contest. For those of you that played along, it was the super cute, quite rare handheld from 2001, the Pokemon Mini. Did you guess it? The Color TV Game 15 from all the way back in 1977 is our guest and focus for today's episode. Signaling their second home console offering, Nintendo quickly launched their TV Game 15 hot on the heels of the Color TV Game 6. Losing money on their original Color TV Game 6, Nintendo used both Mitsubishi and the same processor from the 6 to hike up the price on the 15. The 15 was really an upgraded 6 console. The 6 was capable of everything the 15 did, but was a throttled back or neutered launch model. The 15 was marketed as being superior, clearly 15 games was over double the initial offering of the original 6 version. It also boasted detachable controllers, a major advantage to both gameplay and comfort. The detachable controllers on the 15 were a nice design touch. The 15 console showcased here had cables attached to the controllers that were a massive 90 centimeters in length. These would end up being longer than the Nintendo Entertainment System controllers when it was launched in 1985. The eight game modes available are shown here. Player 1 and 2 racket size buttons are shown here. Puck or ball speed selection is the third button from right on the top row. Top right button is the singles or double selection slider. Bottom left is the power slider for on or off. Green button in the lower middle of the control panel is the reset. The red button on the lower right is the fire button, this is used for the shooting game only. Here is the gameplay, shown as tennis game A, and doubles mode. Notice both the large rackets and fastball. As we slide the selector into tennis mode B, you'll see the heavily layered blue and orange brick wall turn into a single net that does not affect gameplay. Both versions of tennis have a cool green background color. As we slide the selector down one more notch, we come to Hockey Mode A. This game is presented on a light blue backdrop and has the choice of either orange team to our left, or the green team to our right. In Hockey Mode A, we have a center line that actually will affect the gameplay, insomuch that if the center line bricks are struck the puck bounces off them and returns to the player's own half. The two center bricks will appear and disappear at random to add excitement during various intervals that further affect gameplay by deflecting the puck. As we change to Hockey Game B, we see that this is an identical game as shown on our previous episode showcasing the Color TV 6, if you're interested please follow the link below. Both paddles are shown in their large configuration. Puck speed is fast, and to score, a player must get the puck in the opponent's goal. The scoring shown on the screen fades after a goal, reappearing after the next goal, here we see the orange team has 3 goals to the greens team's 10. Go greens lol! Volleyball game A is also found on the color TV 6, the layered brick wall of orange and blue obstructions on a bright pink background is vivid to say the least. I have to admit that volleyball game A is likely the hardest of all the games presented here. The obstruction brick wall, with its orange and blue bricks can really catch you out. Once a player reaches a score of 15 the game is finished. You can see here, I'm pressing the green button and pointing out the 0-0 score. Now let's move forward to volleyball game B and see the center line shift to a simple single line net that does not affect gameplay. Volleyball game B can be quite enjoyable, even by today's high standards. I'm sure you'll agree that the screenplay is still crisp and bright, even by modern expectations. Any screen distortion seen here is merely from me videotaping an old-fashioned CRT television. The quality I'm seeing is actually impressive to be honest. Although unashamedly nothing more than a simple Pong clone, Nintendo did present an attractive home games console with the 15. Both the 6 and 15 consoles were licensed by Magnavox, who issued their own console called the Odyssey several years earlier. Ping Pong is our next game. Again we see a green background, much like the earlier tennis options, however this is much lighter in hue and lacks the intense impact we got from the tennis background, also the paddles have a washed out pink color, making this the least vibrant of all games shown here. The center line has only two bricks shown at the bottom of the screen. The bricks will interfere with gameplay if struck by the ball. I guess the idea of this screen representation was to mimic a ping pong table and the small low net is supposed to be the two bricks in this screen facsimile. The last selection available to us here on the Color 15 TV game console is this somewhat unique early version of a shooting game. 
The screen is a beautiful deep blue color, coupled with green paddles that make up the firing platform, seen here to our left, sadly the use of double paddles has no effect on this gameplay, but they have not been disabled and should be ignored. The target is the far right green paddle, again I could have disabled the second paddles here, which with hindsight might have made this section of viewing a little clearer perhaps. Let's watch a while and it should hopefully be clear. If I'm successful in hitting the target to the right of the screen the whole screen flashes. It appears as a bright yellow flash. The fire button is the red one to the far right, I confused this on more than one occasion with the green reset button when I became overly excited while shooting. Finishing up on the shooting game here, which for completeness and full disclosure I'll mention here is a single only player game that appears on the Color TV 15 system. It does not have a two-player option available, therefore the second controller is redundant during this particular game mode. Looking back once again at the Hockey B, game mode option we saw earlier, we'll examine the puck speed, be it slow or fast, and then we'll look at the paddle sizes, both large and small, starting with the orange team. Both teams now have small paddles with a fast puck. Look closely now as I slow the puck down, it is visibly slower. I'll toggle between fast and slow here. I think you can clearly see the difference here as I move between a fast and slow puck. And once again back to a fast puck. Here I'll demonstrate the doubles to singles option. Then back to doubles, and again adding large paddles but retaining the slow puck for now. Notice the puck as it deflects through the front orange player's paddle, before bouncing off the green team's goalie. I'll briefly demonstrate the left controller being removed from its cradle. I'll try not to block your view too much here. In real life, I'd play this further away, utilizing the full 90 centimeters of cable. But for today I hope you'll get the feeling of why the Color TV Game 15 Showcase today beat the cheaper 6 version of my last episode. Well, that concludes our quick look at Nintendo's Color TV Game 15, from way back in 1977. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed watching, and feel the information and presentation shown was relevant and nicely paced. We move on to our traditional question that I like to pose at the end of every episode, and that is the what in the world question. Do you know what random Nintendo item this could be? Tune in to next week's episode to find out. Thank you for watching. As with every channel battling for viewership and their engagement, I'd like to ask you to please like us here by hitting that like button. If you're wanting to join me on my epic journey please feel free to follow us as well. I'm hoping to one day get at least a thousand subscribers, that'll mark my threshold to start gifting away my collection to my supporters. Donation is warmly accepted to help keep our channel alive, and constructive comments are always appreciated to help us develop our episodes in future. Thank you so much.